Hi Special Agents, Mrs G back again with another set of reading top tips for you. Remember, this is confidential information. Shh, don't tell everyone. Okay, so this week we're going to find and copy words. Now this is really tricky because some people want to write in a full sentence but the question is only asking us for one or two words to get the answer. If you write the whole sentence you will not get the point. Okay, so as always let's read everything on the page before we even think about the questions that we're being asked. William unwrapped it and took a big bite. Ping! went the little coloured sweets. Crack! went the chocolate, squelch went the ice cream, crunch went the ice cold rock hard toffee and guess what? Push, pull, jiggle, joggle, poke, flick, wibble, wobble, another tooth wobbled. Okay, can you scan and skim and find the word, one word that describes the noise the chocolate made? Can you scan and skim and find the word that tells us the noise the chocolate made. So if you look for the word chocolate, there is a word that tells us the sound that it made. Think you've got it? Crack. So all you would need to write if that was a question in a special agent task is the word crack. Fantastic. Let's try another one. Can you find the word that describes the noise or the sounds the toffee made. Pause the video if you need more thinking time. Can you find the word that shows us the sound the toffee made? If you scan and skim for the word toffee and read that part of the text again, I think you can get this answer. I think you've got it. There it is, crunch. And that's all you need to write down. Well done. Okay, new text. Let's read everything on this page before we even think about the questions. Lunchbox, the story of your food. Do you take a lunchbox to school with you? There are lots of different things you could have in a lunchbox, such as sandwiches, juice and fruit. Have you ever wondered where your food and drink come from? Practice question C. Find and copy two things you could have in your lunchbox. Now copy is also so important special agents. You have to spell the word exactly how it's spelled in the text or you could lose a point. So you find the word, you copy the word, you copy the exact letters. So the question is asking us for things we could have in your lunchbox. So I think we should go ahead and scan for the word lunchbox in the text. Are you ready? Off we go. There it is. Let's read it. In a lunchbox such as sandwiches, oops, sandwiches, juice and fruit. Okay, we only need to pick two. So I'm going to pick sandwiches and I've copied it very carefully from the text and I'm going to pick fruit. You could have had sandwiches and juice or juice and fruit or juice and sandwiches and you still would have got the, the mark. Okay, let's read everything that's in this text. Apple juice. In spring, the apple trees in the orchard are full of flowers. In summer, tiny apple buds grow from each flower stalk. The buds keep growing and, by autumn, the trees are full of ripe, sweet fruit ready to be picked. Machines cut down the apples or groups of pickers reach into the trees and fill their boxes with fruit. 16. Find and copy one word that makes the apples sound tasty. So one word. Not the sentence, this is really important, one word. So we're looking for something that describes the apples and makes them sound tasty or nice to eat. Okay. And it won't be the word tasty because we've got to find a word that means the same as tasty. Good way to start is let's go and underline wherever we see the word apple and see if we can get any clues. This is not a remembering task, this is a reading task. Let's get scanning and skimming. When we find it, we underline it. Okay, so it says apple there. The apple trees in the orchard are full of flowers. Doesn't make me want to eat them, doesn't make them sound nice to eat. I'm going to keep scanning and skimming. Okay, where else? In summer, tiny apple buds grow from each flower stalk. No, that doesn't really make them sound nice to eat. I'm going to keep reading. Okay. Ah, now, the buds keep growing and by autumn, the trees are full of ripe, sweet fruit, ready to be picked. 
Now ripe fruit doesn't make it sound very tasty. What about sweet fruit? Do you think sweet fruit tastes nice? I think the adjective they're looking for is sweet and you just need to copy and spell it exactly how it's spelled in the text and you'll get that one right. Well done guys, fantastic. Red, white, green and yellow droplets flicked all over the sky at the top of our lovely painting. Great splashes of paint landed on my clothes. Mum will be furious, I wailed. We rubbed and scrubbed as much as we could. We did not hear Mum come home. Then we saw her. I wanted to hide from her really cross face. Question 8. Find and copy two words that tell you how JJ and Jasmine tried to clean off the paint. Find and copy two words that tell you how JJ and Jasmine tried to clean off the paint. So we're looking for two things they did, two doing words. Let's go back to the text and find and underline something to do with cleaning off the paint. Okay. Now... Great splashes of paint landed on my clothes. That doesn't tell me much. I'm going to keep reading. Mum will be furious, I wailed. We rubbed and scrubbed. Ah, do you think scrubbed is something to do with cleaning off paint, boys and girls? And rubbed. Now, I know they're past tense verbs because they end with E-D. Rubbed and scrubbed. So that means they were trying to clean off the paint. I think the words they're looking for are rubbed and scrubbed. So what we do, we go back. And we pay attention to the double B and the ED. We write rubbed on one line and we write scrubbed on another. And we've copied it exactly how it's spelt in the text. Well done, guys. Fantastic. Okay, we've got a little bit more to read. You know the rules. Let's read it first before we even think about the questions. The baker mixes the flour with water, sugar and yeast. Turns it into soft, squashy dough and bakes it into a very hot oven. Out come fresh loaves of bread, ready to send to the shops. Number 13. Write two words that tell you what the dough feels like. So we're looking for something that describes the dough. Adjectives describing words. So let's go back and scan and skim for the word dough. When we find it, underline it because the answers could be very close. So there it says dough. If we read to the full stop and bakes it in a very hot oven, that doesn't help us at all. So I'm going to go back to the beginning of the sentence where I found the word dough and read it again and see if I can find two adjectives. I wonder if you spotted them before me, special agents. The baker mixes the flour with water, sugar and yeast, turns it into soft, squashy dough. <gasps> I think I heard some adjectives, did you? So I heard the word soft. Does that describe how something feels? I think it does. And I also heard squashy. And they've used a comma in between two adjectives. So I also knew to keep looking after the comma. So all we do is look carefully. Copy soft. Exactly how it's spelled in the text. And put squashy on line two. Spelling it exactly how it's spelled in the text. And we will get that point well done. Living in a castle. When you think of a castle, you might have stories like King Arthur in mind. You might even think of stories about princesses and dragons. But what were castles really like and who lived and worked in them? Hundreds of years ago, when these castles were new, lots of people lived in them. The high towers and thick walls kept them safe when there were battles. Today, many castles are ruins and are falling down. D. Find and copy the name of the story that people think of when they think of castles. So we're looking for the name of a story. So remember what we've learned in a previous video. We need to either look for the word story or a word similar to story and find it and underline it and see if the answers are there. So let's go back to the beginning of the story and find and underline. I can't find story, but I can find this. You might think of stories like King Arthur. So what's the name of the story that we might think about? King Arthur. Now, not only would I like you to copy it down properly, I would also like you to remember the capital letters for King and Arthur. Tell someone at home why they must have a capital letter. Well done, special agents. Okay, fantastic. Lords and ladies. A castle usually belonged to a rich lord. He lived in the castle with his family. His wife was called a lady. Their children had their own garden to play in and lots of servants to do things for them. Knights. 
Knights were important men who worked for the Lord. They were skilled fighters who kept the land safe from robbers and enemies. Question 9. Find and copy one word that shows knights were very good fighters. So we're going to go back to the text. This is not a memory job. This is a reading job. We're going to find and underline the word fighters and see if there's an adjective there that we think means they were really good at it. Are you ready? So let's scan and skim for the word fighters. When we find it, underline it. Okay. So, I know this question is about knights, so I'm going to go straight to the bottom piece of text and I'm going to scan from there. So, scan and skim for the word fighters. There we go. They were skilled fighters. Which one of those words that I've just said means good at something? Didn't you've got it? And the answer for that one is skilled. And you must spell it properly because the question is telling you to find and copy it. Okay, well done guys. Fantastic. On Wednesday, Molly was building a monster when her mother said, Molly, tidy up. But Molly was too busy having fun. Then Molly went for tea and she still hadn't tidied up. When Molly came back, the living room was tidy. Who's tidying up? I'd like to meet them. Maybe it's an octopus, she thought. Molly looked everywhere, under her bed, inside the top drawer and even down the toilet. But Molly couldn't find octopus anywhere. Then she had an idea. Number six, where did Molly look for the octopus? Write down one place. We need to go back, go back and read again like we trained to do last week and look for, look for the octopus or the verb look. Are you ready? So let's scan and skim for where Molly is looking. Now, because this is a story, it's probably going to be look in the past tense. So looked, got to add ed. Can you find the word looked? Molly looked everywhere, under her bed, inside the top drawer and even down the toilet. The easiest thing to do here was copy down the first place you told. So I'm going to copy under her bed and I would get the point for that. Well done boys and girls. So, winter parcel. Today I'm like a parcel, wrapped up from top to toe. Protected from the icy winds, the rain, the sleet and snow. My head has got a hat on, my neck hides in a scarf, and on my hands some puppet gloves, a tiger and giraffe. My coat is thick and furry, and does up very high, and on my feet I've special boots to keep me warm and dry. So there's little of me that anyone can see, this walking, talking parcel is most definitely me. Number 19. Find and copy two words that show the coat is warm. So we're looking specifically for the coat. So scan and skim and there will be some adjectives about the coat. Okay, are you ready? Let's go back. My coat is thick and furry. Think you've got the adjectives? What is the coat? It is thick and it is furry and you would get the points there well done secret agents remember don't share these top tips with everyone leave me a like if you'll be tuning in next time bye for now